So hi everyone and welcome to the Cloud Lunch and Learn sessions. My name is Dana, so I'm taking over because the other moderator for this um, series unfortunately is out sick for a bit. And um, we have the fourth and final session of our series um, related to IoT. We have Victor with us again explaining how to create your first IoT central app. Um, so if you can take it away, Victor. Uh, thank you, Dana. OK, so welcome everyone to the Cloud Lunch and Learn. This final session of creating your first IoT central app of the sessions of related to IoT. Uh, you start to record already, yes? No, no? Yes, yeah. yeah. OK. So happy Friday, guys. I'd like you to say thank you very much to Cloud and Lunch and Learn for the opportunity for of presenting here the series about the IoT. Uh, a special thank you to for Lisa, Dana, and you got to be such a wonderful guys helping you as a moderator. Uh, okay, so my name is Victor Rodriguez. I'm Azure Cloud Specialist at Storm Technology. I've been exploring and working with IoT on the past four years. And if you'd like to know more about me, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter. So connect with me. We can have a chat about any problem that you have, anything that you, any kind of idea. So feel free to connect with me. Okay, so and for today's session, we are going to cover creating your first IoT central app. So let's jump to the agenda. The agenda for today is what is the Azure IoT Central? Uh, create an Azure IoT Central custom app using the IoT Central. Uh, create a device template for a custom device using the IoT Central. And create a program project to a simulate device. This part here, we just highlight parts of the code or not enter the details of the code because we are limiting time inside of the session. And monitor and common the simulate device from an IoT Central dashboard. OK, so. If we look for a typical IoT solution, we can break it down into things, insights, and actions. And things are the IoT device, the ad device, and the gateways that you have connected to the cloud. So on the right-hand column, you see at, at the actions column, a set of business application that actually allows you to visualize the data coming from your IoT device and take actions based on this data. So many customers struggle with the first IoT solution because they believe that you can draw a simple arrow to connect the things on the left with the things on the right. So, however, let me just like this. However, if you try, if you try to do this before, you know this like entirely untrue. And there's a lot of things in the middle that actually ha help make this work. Okay. So Azure IoT Central is meant to simplify the production ready IoT solution. It's highly secure, industry focused, and offers a practical pricing model and take and take care of all the IoT plumbing that we're just talking about. So Azure IoT Central enables the easy monitoring and management of a fleet of remote devices. Address at Central encompass a range of underlying technologies that work great, but can be complicated to implement when many technologies are needed. So these technologies include uh, Azure IT Hub, the Azure Device Provision and Service, the Azure Maps, Azure Time Series Insights, Azure IT Ads, and many others. So in on, it's only necessary to use this kind of technology directly that I mentioned. If you need more granularity, that's not available inside of the IoT Central. So one of the purpose of this session is to help you to decide if there is enough features inside of IoT Central to support the scenarios you are like to need. So let's investigate what the IoT Central can do. First, IoT Central is a hosted app platform that's the easiest way to get your device connected to the cloud. Keep your device connected through a centralized device management that you can fill and transform your data and bridge the gap to your business application. Uh, along with a set core of features within IoT Central that make Microsoft, that Microsoft just launched recently, like the edge support, 
monitoring rule, trigger actions, and industry focused application templates. That's make IoT Central way, way, way ahead of uh, ahead of other uh, of their, uh, other providers. So now we'll talk about IoT Central application templates. So the Azure IoT Central templates it's a tool for kickstart kick, kick, uh, kick your IoT development. Uh, this is what really get you the get you like in the production level of your IoT solution more quickly. So. The IoT Central consists of a simple operator dashboard, a simple device templates, simulate device, pre-configured rules and jobs, rich documentation, including tutorials. And of course, you can bring your brain to this. So for the scenario of today, we're going to check how we can implement a custom application using the IoT Central to monitor and refrigerate trucks using, of course, the IoT Central. So let's understand first the scenario. Let's say the Contos operates a fleet of refrigerated trucks. We have a number of customers within a city and a base that you operate from. You command each truck to take contents and deliver to any of the customers. However, the cooling system may fail in one of your trucks and the contents start, uh, you start to melt. So you need the option to instruct in the truck to return to the base and then to dump the contents. Alternatively, you can deliver the contents to another customer who might be near to the truck when you're become when you let's say you become aware of the contents are melting. In order to make these decisions, you need an up-to-date picture of all it's going on with your trucks. You will need to know the location of each truck in the map the state of the cooling system and the state of the contents. IoT Central provides all you need to handle the scenario. So let's build this. Let's first create a custom IoT Central app. Let me open here my Azure portal. Just a second. So let's start by navigating to apps Azure as Azure IoT Central.com. Let me open this here. So here on the left side, we have we need to click and build. You can see here that Microsoft offers a set of pre-built industry focused templates. Like for example, you have templates for retail, uh, templates for energy, government, healthcare. And for today, we're going to click to custom app. And here we need to define a couple things. First, the application name. So let's say that let's call this uh, Contoso. Because, sorry, yes? the, your screen is not. Uh, ah, okay, now it's reflecting. Yeah. Okay. There, there was a delay. Sorry. No problem. So let's call this application name Contoso Refrigerated Trucks Monitor. Okay. Uh, that's one important thing here. The URL must be unique. So you need to set here the URL to some unique ID. So let's type here, for example, 2020 zero weight. And here the application template, we're not going to click any template. We're going to use a custom template. Here we're going to use the free plan. It is just a trial. You're going to just show how the functionalities and you need to fill the, your contact, contact info. OK, so and using the magic of I already created this before, let's jump to our IoT Central. So after you just fill this, just click Create, and you're going to be deployed to your IoT Central app. So let me jump to the one that I previously cre created. OK, let me leave here. OK, now let's do a quick overview of IoT Central. So let me just Come back here and let's start this overview. Okay, and here. Okay, so we can start by the dashboard that display the dashboard. So the dashboard display your application dashboard. As a solution builder, you can customize the global dashboard for your operators and depending on the role, the user role, the operators can also create their own personal dashboard. 
So for example, if you click new here, I don't have the device created or anything created, but you can easily drag and drop things to the dashboard and build your own dashboard. I leave this for now. And here we have the device. So the device is enable you to manage your connected device can be real or simulated device. And here we have the device groups that let you, you view and create logical collections of devices specified by a query. You can save this query and use the device groups to the application to perform bulk operations. Here we have rules. Rules enable you to create and edit rules to monitor your device. Rules are evaluated based on the device telemetry and trigger customizable actions. For example, if you created just here a new rule, you can pick it, a device template and set some conditions. You can enable, you can aggregate, you can select an operator and a value, and you can generate an action, for example, send an email or just trigger a web hook. And now analytics. So the analytics create a custom view on top of the device data to derive the insights from your applications. If you, uh, if you work with the time series insights, basically the analytics is the same thing, but inside of the IT central. Now the jobs. Jobs, the jobs enable to manage your device at scale by running bulk operations. So let's say that you want to set a property inside of the device. We're gonna see this on the next steps, but basically let's say that you want to set like, let's say an optimal temperature for the device. You can create a job that you set this optimal temperature for the job for the device at scale for all your device or group of selected device. And here we have the device templates that we just mentioned. So the, the, device, the device template is where you can create and manage the characteristics of the device that's connected to your application. You're gonna check how this works. And here we have the data export. Now Microsoft just add to you have the data export legacy and the data export preview. But basically what the data export do is you enable you to configure a continuous export to external servers, such as storage and queues. Because why the reason for that? Because what's happened is today in IoT Center, you just keep the information from the last 30 days. So if you want to, let's say, and do some kind of hot or cold path to analyze your data that you're extracting from your device, you need to export your data to a different location. And in here we have the last one, the administration, that you can manage your application settings, customizations, billing, users, and roles. And you can even apply your own brand to your IoT Central app. Okay. Now let's start to configure a custom IoT Central app. Let me jump here. So now that you already have an idea of the capabilities of the IoT Central, let's start by configuring the our custom and IoT Central app. So the first step is creating a device template. The data communicated between a remote device and the IoT center is specified in a device template. So the device template encapsulates all the details of the data so that both device and the IoT center have all they need to make sense of the communication. So let's start by creating device templates. What you need to do is click in here in device templates, and we're going to click in here new to create a new template. And you can see here a range of options. So today we're gonna select the IoT device. Before I jump on this, Microsoft already provide some featured device templates. So let's say that you already have a device and you don't want to create every single proper common. So what Microsoft do is it's you already provide some of this device as template. So you can see, for example, the regado buttons here uh, if I scroll down to the end here, we can see the, the Microsoft chip to IoT de device kit, de dev device kit. So there's a couple here that can really help you to accelerate this process of creating your IoT Central. So I'm going to create here IoT device, clicking next, customize. And here I will call the de device template name. I'll call this uh, refrigerated track 001, clicking next plus review and create. Okay, so everything is created. So let's start by 
creating a capability model like in for this case you'll be a custom but of course if you want to want to accelerate it even more let's say you are in a phase of developing a customer and you're okay everything's done you want to go to production you create a new it central and you don't need to let's say recreate everything every single property that i show you you just import this capability model and it's done. Or let's say that a vendor you send this capability model. It's really simple. It's, it's just import a JSON file and everything's done. So let's go for custom. So we are now ready to add the specifics of the device template. So let's click here, add interface, again custom, and to start to building this blank interf interface. So what is the interface? Interface defines a set of the capabilities. We had a quite a few to create to define this refrigerated truck. Let's start by adding the sensor telemetry. So the telemetry is the data value transmitted by sensors, and the most important sensor in our refrigerated truck monitors the temperature of the contents. So what we need to do is click Add Capabilities. As a display name, I will choose copy and paste here guys so content temperature the capability type will be telemetry notice that you have a set of options here the semantic type will be temperature schema will be double and the unit celsius nice so let's add the rest of the template now let's add the state telemetry what is a state telemetry so a state is are important they let the operators know what is going on uh, in a state in IoT Central is associated with, like, let's say, a range of values. So let's use the add capability again. And let's add the contents, let's say, this uh, state for one state for empty, one state for full, one state for melting. So let's start first define this capability as content state. The capability type will be telemetry, and the semantic type will be state. The value schema here will be string. You can see my screen, yes? OK. So let me add here the you. Let me click in the button add here. A second, yep. So the display name will be first one will be empty. But for my state and the other one will be full. And the last one will be melting. OK, so. Now we need to add some uncertainty to our simulation. Since you are simulating a refrigerated truck, we need to add this, this thing inside of about the cooling system. So let's say if the cooling system fail, the, change, the chances of the contents melt is increased. So let's add this to our, our model here. So let's click here, add the capability again, and they will define the cooling system state. And that you'll be the, again, you'll be the capability type telemetry, the semantic type state, and the value schema string. Now let's add the values. So the first value will be on, the second. Off and the third will be failed. Okay, so we have everything related to the cooling system state. So a more complex state is the state of the truck itself. If it all goes well, a truck in normal routing will be like ready, going to in route, delivering, returning, loading loading and back to red again. However, you should add a dumping state for when the melted contents need to be disposed of. Using the same process, let's create a new state. So let's click here again, add capabilities. And the display name to be truck state, the capability type telemetry, and the value schema is string. Uh, sorry semantic type state and the value schema is string. Now let's add first ready, 
Dev M wrote delivering returning and loading. Okay, now we need to add event telemetry. Events are issues triggered by the device and communicated to IoT Central app. Events can be one of the three types, can be error, warning, or information. Uh, so one of the possible event is when a device might trigger in a conflict common. An example be, might be the truck returning with uh, returning empty from a customer, but receive a comment, let's say, to deliver the contents to another customer. If this conflict occurs, it's a good idea for the device to trigger an event and warn the operator of the IoT Central app. Another event might be just acknowledge and record the customer ID and the truck is the uh, the customer ID and the truck that is delivering to. So let's use it again the add capability. Uh, let me scroll down here, add capability. And first thing is, let's set the display name to event. And the capability will be telemetry again. And this time, the semantic module will be event. OK, uh, the schema here will be a string. And the severity level will be information. OK, now, add the, let, now we can add the, the location telemetry. OK, so. A location is probably the most important and yet one of the easiest measurements to add to a device template. Under the hood, what happens consists in latitude, longitude, and let's say you can opt in for altitude for the device. So we already have clicked in the added capability. So let's set here this proper to call location of location. Location. The capability type will be telemetry again. The semantic type this time will be location, and the schema will be geo point. Okay, you're almost there, guys. So let's add now some properties. So a property of a device is typically a constant value that's sent to IoT Central app when the communication is first initiated. So in our refrigerated truck scenario, a good example of a property is the license plate of the truck. Uh, or some similar, let's say, unique truck ID. So properties can also be uh, a device configuration da data. For example, we will define, a, let's say, the optimal temperature for the contents of the, the truck. So the optimal temperature might be changed with a different type of cons. Let's say you are just what ice cream or just meat or bread, that kind of temperature, you can set the proper inside of the, your IoT device to set the optimal temperature inside of the truck. So depending on the conditions or weather conditions, whatever may be appropriated, this, this of course will change. This color proper that we change a lot and you need to change is, uh, we can call this inside of the IoT Central, is a writable property. Okay, so, Again here, add capabilities. This time we're gonna call this first property to be truck ID. The capability type this time will be properties. And the semantic type will be none. So for this schema, you'll be string. Writable is you'll be off because you're not gonna write again. So it's a property set inside of device, not gonna place this, and the unit is none. So now we can add an optimal temperature property. Again, we just need to click here, add property. The display name will be optimal temperature. The semantic type will be property. And the cement, oh sorry, the, the capability type will be property and the semantic type temperature. So schema double. And the, now we're not gonna set the writable options to on. So that means that we'll be able to write this proper inside of your device using the IoT Central and the unit to be Celsius. So almost there, guys. So 
let's add the commands. So, commands are sent by the operators of the IoT central app to the remote device. Commands are similar, let's say, to writable properties, but a command can contain any number of input fields, whereas a writable property or, or is limited to a single value. So, for refrigerated trucks, there are two commands we should add. A command to deliver the cons to a customer, and a command to recall the truck to base. Let's use the add capability again. Okay, so the display name of this command we're gonna call go to customer. The capability type will be common, and the command type will be synchronous. When we, if we turn the request option one, we will be able to enter more details of the command. So let's turn this on and add here. First one, customer ID, and the schema here, integer. And the unit is done. Let's enter, let, uh, what we're going to do is will be the last command. So let's enter now a new command. So we can create here, add capability. This command will be recall. So let's say that we send a truck to delivery and they say, yeah, it's wrong. The address or it's wrong, the content, just recall. This will be this button. Okay, so here will be command. Command type is synchronous. We don't need to request on, so everything is fine. So we are ready. So we define everything that's required for the interface. So we just need to click save here. Uh, there's one thing missing here. Yeah. Okay, save. Yeah. So one important thing uh, before we go any further, we need to carefully and double check our interface after we because what happened is after we save actually after we publish the interface it's not possible to come back and change do the change interface so we not be able to come back and let's say add something or remove something for the interface we need to do everything again on the device template so uh, this here, we can come back here to have it truck 001. We can see a summary of the interface, so no problem at all. Uh, everything looks fine. I hope so. This is not compromised anything. Yeah, go, go to customers. Okay. okay. Okay, so we just need to click now publish and publish again. So now we need to create a dashboard to visualize the information that's received by our Center. Here in Refrigerated Truck, let's create in views and then visualizing the device. We should now see a list of the telemetry properties and commons that we just create. And of course, by the side of this, a checkbox that you can just select and add. So that also a set of cloud properties, custom tiles that you can just ignore for now, okay? So let's first add the first title that we call location. Now you select here, add tile. So the dashboard is made of the tiles. The reason we chose the location first is that we want to expand this from the default size. So what you just need to do is expand here the size of the map and the reason they will just select the locations because this one is the most fun that you show the location of the truck on the map. Before we add more tiles, let's change the view name here. So just scroll up and let's call this truck view. And now we can add all the rest of the, the properties. So we can select here, 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 here. Select the all. Okay, yeah. That's it, and I will add all the tiles here. Oh, just add them, okay. So that's too different. So I will add one by one because I want the visualization separately. Cooling system state, event, and drug state. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so uh, we add all the capabilities of the truck inside of the same view now. 
Now the dashboard, you just display all the information that we need. We just need to click save here to save the view. And let's publish this again. Now with the view. OK. Now we just create a new view with just with the sole purpose of setting the writable properties. So let's click here in the views again. And this time we're going to pick editing device and cloud data. Let's change the form name here to, let's say, set properties. OK, and we're going to add here the optimal temperature. That's fine. OK, we just need to save, publish again, and it's fine. So now to be able to test our IoT Central, we need to add two device. To do this, we need to click here on the device and click new. First thing we need to do is, is select the template type to be the refrigerated truck 001, and let's define a friendly name. Uh, I will call this refrigerated truck dash one, and in here in the device ID, I will call refrigerated truck one. Okay, the simulated device here is set into no. Uh, we're going to build, let's say, a real truck here. Well, let's say is a simulated real truck. Setting this value to yes, what this do is to instruct the IoT Central to pump out random values for our telemetry. These random values can be really usable to just validate the device template. Okay, for now is no. Gonna create this. Let's wait a few seconds. Then our device here is on the list. Note the device status is registered. This status will change once the IoT center accepts the connection coming from the device. Okay, so let's click here and see the truck view. Okay, here the, the truck view is showing all the tiles that you just add and the status waiting for data. We're not sending anything so far, so that's why the reason for that. So uh da, da, da. let me check here so let's add the second device here so i will add on that second device pick the template name to to refrigerated truck 001 and the device name i will call refrigerated truck here and refrigerated truck two and create so now to be able to connect our device to Azure IoT Central, what we need to do is to take note about the device connection. We can simply click on the device now and click here and connect. So let's get note of the following for both refrigerated trucks. Let me open Notepad here just a second. And first, the device ID my IG scope here, and my primary key. This information is, is, uh, is enough to be able to connect our device to the IoT Center. Okay, let me close here, come back here, open the refrigerated truck number two, and get the notes about this as well. So, device ID, IG scope, and the primary key. Now, we need to replace the values inside of the code. So, in here, I have the Visual Studio code running the refrigerated truck simulate device. You can see here that's a lot of code. I will leave this by the end of the presentation with the, the resource for this. But what happened is my code here running C Sharp is simulated a refrigerated truck, setting properties, sending telemetry, location, and so on. Okay, so let's replace this inside of your our code. For the refrigerated truck number one, I will grab here the information related to the scope ID first. And my connection string, oh, my device ID. and my primary connection string. 
my primary key. Let's save this. Let's check if this one's running. Now let's change first the second track. Uh, okay, so here I have my scope ID. Here I have my device ID. Yeah, and here I have my primary key. Fine, let me save this. Okay, so after we just replace these values, what we need to do is we can simply come here and .NET run for this, yeah, for the device number two. And let's do the same for the device number one, .NET run. So a console message uh, should appear now uh, every five se seconds with the content temperature. Okay. Uh, Let's jump it back to the IoT Central. Let's confirm inside of the dashboard if it is the left is being received. Okay. Uh, let me just do something here. So come back to my device. I'll open your tab for one and the device number two. Okay, no data received yet. Let's just wait a couple of seconds. And I hope that everything starts to appear. So here. Let me explain. So here in our tiles, we have here first we have uh, the commands. Uh, first, we have the contents temperature that we can solve here. So the contents temperature represents the temperature in Celsius. Uh, the content state that to display the value empty, full, or melting. Oh, it's starting to appear. Yeah, that's nice. And uh, the truck state. Okay, the truck state that the value can be ready or enrolled. You can see that our truck is ready. Uh, the cooling system state that can be on, off, or failed. Right now, our truck, I think it has stopped it, so the cooling state is off. And the optimal temperature, uh, I don't know if I added this. Yeah, I did. Let me just add this quick. Come here, view. Let me add the properties here. Where is, where is? Yeah, here, in here. Okay, let's save. Publish, publish, and open device number one. Yeah, so, and here we have the optimal temperature and the truck ID. So we have the truck number one, is not set the optimal temperature. And of course, we have the nice map here displaying the truck position the map. Okay, now let's test and check what happened if we start to send the command to the device. So let me click here in the common tab. And here we have the customer ID. Let's check, let's send the every truck number one to the customer number two. Click run. It's fine. I will jump to the truck number two. Okay, sending telemetry already. Let's jump to the commands and send this to the customer number seven. And run. So jumping back to Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code here. So let's check the console. What happened? So let me just change here. Yeah, so we can observe two things here. First, that the road was found, a new event in the log, the truck state to change from ready to enroll. You can see here, after we send the command, he found the road to deliver this. He found the number of the points using the Azure maps, and he changed the truck state from ready to enroll. So we are starting to deliver. Let's check the truck number two, the same, and ready, to enrolled. That's nice. Uh, checking back the IoT Central dashboard, let's check there what changed there. So back into the truck view, we can see the locations of where it start to change. So we can almost uh, near real time know where our truck. We can see the content temperature. We can see the truck state that is enrolled. We can see the cooling system zone now. You can see the events that's happened. So we can see that. We found a new customer. We are delivering to the new customer. Uh, let's check the truck number one. If it's something's wrong, no, yeah. So in roads, uh, yeah, we can see here the cooling state is starting to fail. So since it's a simulation, there's no problem at all. But it's good to know that we have alerts, uh, some kind of visualization for this. And we can see it after we cooling state start to fail. The contents of my truck start to melting. So. It's a problem. So let's try another comment right now. So 
let's say that uh, we have a problem with the truck number one. The content system state is failing, the content start to melt. So let's send a command here to recall. We can just simply click in commands, run, recall. Let's check what happened with the truck number one now. Okay, so I found the road to way back and my truck state just changed to returning. That's very good. So it, it, what, what I'm trying, uh, what the Azure IT Center here is trying to do is give you like a really easy way to work and manage your IT device. Another good comment that we can set is the uh, content, uh, the optimal temperature. So let's say that we are transporting ice cream and you want to set the optimal temperature for this specific truck to let's say minus eight. We can just click save. Let's come back to the truck view. Uh, let me just refresh this. Okay, so now the optimal temperature changed to minus eight. Let's see what happened with the truck number two after we did that. Yeah, so my device already received the optimal temperature to update to minus eight. So my temperature inside my truck now will be minus eight. And that's basically what you can do inside of the IoT sense. So what we saw today in session is, let's say, is how simple that you provision a solution for your IoT using Azure IoT Central Custom App. Uh, you can you saw that you, how simple with uh, just clicks and some line of code, you are able to create a dashboard for visualization, create a device, a great device template for, let's say, our business model. In our case, Contoso refrigerated trucks. So you here we can uh, you can monitor, you can send commands to your device. So what IoT Central IoT Center is doing is simplify and be ready for production of your IoT solution. So now let's go to a Q&A time. Uh, you can unmute yourself and send any questions on the chat or anything else, guys. Let me just. Guys, if you have any questions, let me see the chat here. Sorry. Guys, if you have any questions, any anything that your business is looking for, anything that we, you have questions, just hit me or you mute yourself or send through the chat. Let me see here if there's no questions at all. Okay, there's a question. Is what should be the migration strategy for all the enterprise systems? Okay, so let's say that you have everything running on IoT Hub. That's if you talk about all the enterprise system. Uh, let's can, can you elaborate a little bit more? But let me think about this. Let's say that Contos work with refrigerated trucks in a system. Let's say you have a fleet management system. Whatever the fleet management system you have. So basically, the first the first. Uh, phase of this project is we're able to understand your IoT device and how will be the protocols they use to connect with your current system. After that, we can just map this and identify that the IoT central can support this, this, uh, this communication methods. And then after that, we just need to update your IoT device in a POC, for example, and establish the communication with the IoT central. And from there, we can establish the device, uh, device interface uh, telling what will be the telemetry being sent, comments, and so on, and start to build your dashboard from there. And of course, you need to analyze what the kind of data you're going to, to analyze. It's you need to be saving someone else, that kind of thing. Yes, yes, it's, uh, I think the phase wise is the better one. You know? I think if you need to be, let's say, first up, a proof of concept to understand your device and how your device can use the IoT Central, and then look at your business model and say, yeah, we can use all the features inside of the IoT Central for our business model. Uh, because what I found out inside of Azure IoT Central is some limitations related if you want to analyze the data after, after something happened. For example, in, in case of the refrigerated trucks, I want to analyze every time a cooling system fail, for example. Uh, if I want to analyze the last six months to just observe if my truck's having problem, that kind of thing. What would be the position and map that I'm having problem? So the only thing that the Azure Central is limited to as a, a single dashboard is in the sense that you want to analyze information from the past. 
but if, but you can connect, of course, you use the data export to analyze this data. Okay, guys, any more questions? No? Yep. Okay. Thanks so much, Victor. Oh, no problem. All right. Let me put that link on there as well. Do you want to talk about this? I can talk about this then. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'll put the link. Uh, on. Yeah, so uh, the te technology that and software do together with the SkillNet, they are preparing a master's program in Internet of Things. So it's really nice. So if you are want to look to capacitate or improve your skills related to IT, uh, to IoT, you can use this master's program. That's really amazing. Uh, uh, it's it's made by DCU, so we can have a couple of things you can you do in two years, part time, online, and the, the, the here you can see the core models. It's really good, so it's really nice master's program, Internet of Things. You go want to say something about this? No, it's all fine. Uh, I think yeah. the best option is uh, usually Catherine uh, used to talk about this, but um, since she's not here, uh, the best option is definitely access the, the sites, the link that uh, Dana provided in the chat, and you will get more information about the master's program. Yeah. Okay, guys, if you guys don't have any more questions, I think that's it. Uh, Thank you very much for today. So these are the resources for this session. Everything is inside of the Microsoft to Learn. It is a really, really good source of the information. You can do the same simulated device that I just displayed here. There's more simulated device that you can do there as well. And you can do more things related to IoT Center using the resource from Microsoft to Learn. Go there, do everything from the Microsoft interface. They provide a sandbox for you. It's really fine. Uh, and these are all the links that we have here. So thank you. If you feel free to connect with me. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you, Dana. Thanks. Thanks so much, Victor. That was so good. Good. Um, I think we'll all be starting our own trucking companies in no time. Yeah. And, and thanks everyone for joining us this session. So I know we've been throwing a few links at you guys um, throughout the session. So I've just put that up there as a recap. If you get a, didn't get a chance, please do register to get your materials and to let us know that you're interested so we can keep going. And um, the GitHub link is there in case you want to find any other learning resources or anything like that. And if you want to refer back to the series at all, just come to our YouTube page. And in the next week, we have two more sessions coming up. Um, one of our sessions about blockchain and Corda, and we're kicking off our security series um, next Friday. And again, um, if we really appreciate it, if you could just provide us some feedback, the form is very short. So thanks everyone and have a great weekend. Thank you guys. Thank you both. Thank you everyone.